and now we have exhausted basically most of what there is to know about the background of the So what it is doing, my the state of the art, so what we can solve and what we cannot solve, what's waiting for you to do. And because it's waiting for you, we also need to give you the tools to do this. So now we move towards the part of the tutorial that's concerned with the practicalities. And the first thing we have talked about as a problem is the representations of music scores that, that we currently have. So if you're trying to produce, as Professor Fujinaga defined OMR, some kind of digital encoding of the underlying music, we have to know what digital encodings are available to us. So we can work with three groups of formats. First of all, we can look at the standard available digital encodings of music notation. This is today mostly music XML, which is closest to an interchange format for scores. There is the music encoding initiative, which is more for, uh, let's say, scholarly digital editions. It, it's very rich in what metadata you can give it. There is the Lillipond format, which is kind of a niche in music engraving, but as you will see, it has some properties that might be interesting for OMR research. And if we don't want to do this reprinting step, if we don't care about how the music was written and we only want to recover the notes, then we can use MIDI, which is a very practical format. I'm pretty, uh, I mean, is there anybody here who has not heard of MIDI or used it? Guess not. So these are the four general formats you should know about when doing OMR and you should know how they relate to OMR. Then you can use some OMR specific intermediate formats because it's not always practical to go straight to let's say music XML and it will be easier to get a model output something from which you can then get music XML basically by creating a script. Uh, and then there are some formats for the individual sub-steps, but these are not really interesting. These are definitely not OMR specific. It's like pixel masks, bounding box lists. This we don't need to talk about. So the first format of interest is music XML. This is a very, or tries to be a very general format for common Western music notation. It's closest that we have to an interchange format right now. About 230 different uh, music applications support loading and exporting music XML. They, there are, of course, various caveats about this, like supporting only a subset of this. Uh, the standard is open, even though the whole thing is privately owned. Uh, the, the music XML specification is available to anyone. Uh, you have a plethora of applications that help you visualize music XML. If, if you're doing OMR, you want to see the results, of course. Uh, you can automate music XML pro uh, processing just like you automate the processing of any other XML format. Uh, there are tools for digital musicology, such as the Music 21 library, that can load this quite directly. Uh, and Importantly for OMR, there is a huge treasure trove of data in music XML format on the MuseScore website. MuseScore is the open source notation editor, and they, they have an accompanying repository of user-created scores, and some of these, if they are licensed appropriately, you can just download in music XML. And this is like 100,000 or 300,000 scores. I don't know how many there are, but it's a huge amount. And you can see that the music XML uh, tries to do basically everything. So it represents in the same note object both its semantic properties, like its pitch, and the graphical properties, like the position on the page. Uh, there are some tricks in how music XML represents musical time. You have these duration ticks, uh, which is because it's can be very directly exported to the MIDI format, which we'll see later. Uh, 
So that much for music XML. I mean, it's important to know this one if you work with music scores digitally. Then there is the Music Encoding Initiative format, or MEI. Uh, it's also an XML format. It's inspired a lot by the Text Encoding Initiative, which came up with this very comprehensive standard for digital editions of text. The focus of this, and please correct me if I say something wrong, but the focus of this is on scholarly editions, on critical editions of music, plus of course it can do many other things. It's, a, its capabilities are a superset of Music XML. Music XML can be imported into MEI. Everything is also open source, but uh, the process, as with Music XML, the process of contributing to MEI, uh, this takes some time and effort. You have to engage the community, etc., etc. Uh, there are also tools for visualizing this. There is the amazing Verovio plugin. Uh, you can again use various XML readers uh, to manipulate this. There's a libmay and pymay library specifically for that, that specifically implements the uh, MEI uh, document object model. Uh, there isn't that much data available. There are projects using MEI to create digital editions, most prominently I would say Beethoven Felgstadt. This is really beautiful actually if you look at that one. It, it, you see the various layers of Beethoven's manuscripts, for instance, how he changed things during the process of, of composing. This is really valuable for understanding that music. Uh, but you can also see how this is something that is that might be hard to do in music XML, why, why MEI supports this kind of scholarly work. Uh, it also supports much more than just common Western music notation. There are toolkits for various menzoral notations for news, as we've seen. Uh, all the examples from the SIMSA project, which include the Salzin manuscripts and the Libre Usualis, uh, are using MEI in the background for storing the results. Next up is this guy called MNX. Well, it doesn't really exist yet, but uh, the people developing Music XML and some others have decided that just updating Music XML is not the way to go. They have created a World Wide Web Consortium community group on music notation, and they are trying to come up with a new format. So this is not quite there yet. It might take a few years, but we will be going this way. It's something to be aware of if you want to work with digital music scores, watch this peripherally. What you should be aware of is the standard music font layout specification. Um, this is basically Unicode for music symbols. So the Unicode specification has these code points for certain letters or for Chinese characters or for whatever. Smoofo is the, the initiative of extending this code point scheme also to music notation elements, which is far from trivial, as we've seen from the examples of different kinds of music notation. This is like this is a real problem because music notation, as opposed to your normal writing systems for German, Chinese, Japanese, whatever, music notation is not a glottographic script where you just have a sequence of glyphs corresponding to the sounds you give out in a sequence. Music notation is a featural script where you get these little parts like the note head or the stem or the beam which have a clearly defined meaning but by themselves cannot be interpreted. You need configurations of these things. And then you get things like glyphs that have X variable extent. So they, there is no fixed size bounding box into which a beam would always fit. So these are, these are problems that you don't get if you are designing a standard font. Right? So this is why Smoofo is a non-trivial thing. One question, yeah. Yeah. how does that relate to music XML? The MNX format? Yes. Yeah. No, the this is some Smoofo. Uh, Smoofo. I'm not sure how much it's directly related to music XML, it's rather related to how 
a file encoded in music XML should be displayed. How to unify the ways of displaying these formats. Okay. So these XML based file formats are perfectly sensible outputs for an OMR product. They enable you to use this as a black box. You get a music XML out of it, you can open it in music notation editor, fix the, fix the errors and you're happy. It's not too great for publishing OMR articles because uh, the XML tree structure is something that we cannot parse from images. There are no algorithms known today that operate in tractable time and can deal with and can parse two-dimensional input that has the properties of music notation. There are parsers to do this for simpler visual languages, but not for music notation, because some assumptions don't hold. Uh, also, as you've seen, music XML, even though you have enough data to train something, as soon as you figure out the algorithm, uh, the way that it freely interleaves semantics and graphics is not entirely, like, you have to deal with both of these things, even though you, your application only needs to deal with one of them. And you cannot leave anything out. Uh, these formats cannot deal with incorrect recognition results. As, like Music XML especially is designed for valid scores. What your program outputs might not be a valid score. So in order to get it to Music XML, you might have to invent things, create invisible objects, and generally it complicates the OMR process itself, and it's not particularly relevant if you want to publish a paper saying we solved this problem. So, these formats have their own problems, and an interesting alternative is the Lillipond format. It's built over LaTeX, specifically the music tech specification. Uh, you get you use this for engraving. This, is, this isn't really very good for anything else but engraving. There is, a, there is an engraving engine that from this text-based format can typeset quite good-looking music. It gives you a lot of ways to customize the layout. It, you can use very scheme expressions to color note as according to pitch, stuff like that. It's really not an interchange format. So this is useful if you want to produce a nice looking PDF. You can have your OMR system output Lillipond code. Uh, I don't think it has really been tried, so we are not sure whether it's a good idea to get Lillipond, but because Lillipond is to some extent really sequential, this might be a chance to do end-to-end -end OMR with polyphonic music, which is otherwise quite difficult with the single sequence models that we have. Maybe. This is just an idea out there. The problem with Lillipond is that we don't really have good software for manipulating files stored in this format. And then there is this MIDI thing based on a piano roll representation where uh, you have basically note events. So this is a format for storing performance rather than a score. And furthermore, it's a simplified model of what a music performance is. It's fundamentally keyboard-based. So it records the time at which you press a certain key, which key you are pressing, and the time at which you stop pressing the key. It also records properties such as velocity, and it has some control events like, I don't know, switching channels on your keyboard. But, uh, it discards a lot of musical information that you have in the score. So MIDI doesn't distinguish between an F sharp and a G flat. So if your system outputs MIDI, you cannot reconstruct the score itself reliably. On the other hand, it's great for stuff like retrieval a large database. There is so much support for MIDI uh, from software from all, all programming languages, I think, that they have some kind of a MIDI, MIDI library. So these are the general formats that I think you should be aware, about and, uh, aware of and how they relate uh, to OMR. 
And then there are the formats which have been designed to circumvent some of these limitations that we've talked about. Uh, this, of course, implies that you need to go from in an intermediate format to one of these endpoints in order for your thing to be useful. But that's mostly engineering. I mean, it's, it takes time, it's complicated, but it kind of inter it's decouples this engineering portion from the OMR research. There is some literature on designing these formats, and some of them are already implemented. So there is the music notation graph, which describes the document in terms of what you can actually see there. But the graph structure on top of the description of individual musical symbols is what allows you to then interpret these symbol configurations and infer the musical semantics. You've seen this in the demo earlier. Uh, this actually encodes everything that the score can give you, but going from this into one of these output, these useful interchange formats is a lot of coding. Uh, you can also use these precursor semantics formats. So you've seen this end-to-end -end learning output where you just use a sequence of what you can see in this score. Uh, and you can also not care about the semantics because uh, the semantics are hard to machine learn due to these long-range dependencies in the score. So if you want to know what that note is, you have to look at the beginning of the staff, find its clef, find the key signature, and this is not enough, because things can also happen in the middle of the staff that influence how you interpret this specific glyph. So the, the graph approach solves this by saying, okay, it's far away in the picture, but it's close by in the graph. In end-to-end -end approaches, we can reformulate the output in terms not of semantics, but just of the things that exist locally. Right? So there is a clef on the third staff line. There is this key of B minor. There is this quarter note. Of, right? uh, instead of encoding the semantics, you just encode some kind of relevant information about the position on the staff and rely on some engineering to convert this into the semantics down the road. I mean, music notation has rules. You can hard code these rules mostly. But for practical purposes, this works. The problem with these sequential formats is that we haven't figured out how to represent polyphonic music like this yet. And the, these formats are not entirely interoperable. Uh, all of them can export MIDI quite well, but uh, while music XML can import MIDI, by definition you lose information. So conversion to MIDI is a one-way street. And other than that, the the graph of available conversions is really sparse, and all of these conversions are lossy. So the importer of music XML to MEI doesn't really support everything that music XML can do. Same thing for Lilypond and music XML, etc. 